Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. They're on the line for twenty bucks. They keep on playing. Nobody's paying. And some nickels and some dimes. Boom, ba dum, bum, bum. Hi, guys. Jabor from Montreal. If you want to hear more of their music, go on YouTube. They're fantastic. I hope you stay safe, well, and warm, guys. And one of these days we will meet up again. So I'm Maggie, Mrs. Calabash. Come into my kitchen. Today we're going to make a jerk pork tenderloin with some Chinese noodles. These noodles are Derek's favourite. He would spaghettis. They're spaghettis. He would eat them breakfast, lunch, and supper if I'd let him. And but I think they go rather well with the uh, jerk tenderloin. And I've got the recipe for the jerk seasoning. I'll, I'll just give you a little preview. Look, they're all the spices that I put into the jerk seasoning. So let's go back to the stove. I'll leave that here. Otherwise, I'll lose it. Let's go back to the stove and we'll start just by cooking the pork. So come back with me. Uh, I've got the oil on. I've put sesame oil in here. I like the flavour of the sesame oil with the pork. But you can't heat sesame oil as hot as you can um, a canola oil, a sunflower oil, a grapeseed oil. But it does add a nice flavour. And here's the pork tenderloin. I just took off all the, the, the skin, there's a little skin on there, and rubbed it with uh, the seasoning. And I've actually had this marinating overnight. I like to make sure that all the flavour's there. It intensifies the flavour and it also softens the meat. Just remember, to bring the meat out of the fridge for about half an, an hour to an hour to half an hour before you start cooking. This just lets the meat relax and it brings it up to room temperature. It, you get a much nicer flavour and also the meat is, is a little tender, a little more tender. I'm just going to rinse my hands because I touched the meat and I don't like cooking. There we are. Let's just put that up like that. There we are. There. Nice and clean. They're always clean before I start, but um, you can't be too careful these days. I want just to brown this slightly. I've got some, let's see, make sure that is on. I just want to turn that up a little bit. Anyway. Because this is going to cook in its own juice. I'm going to put it, the lid on and just put it over there so that it fries off. But I just got the higher heat at the moment because I want to brown the outside. Um, I've got tenderloin. You could use sirloin of pork. And as I say, when you look at a tenderloin, it's got a, like a, a very fine skin. So I take all that off and the little bit of fat I trim off and I cut the tenderloin on the cross. Now you could fry just the tenderloin cut on the cross but I prefer sort of bite-sized pieces. You don't want to cook the tenderloin too thick. That looks as though that's cooking beautifully. Yes. So 
we're going to shuffle the pans around that is going over there that's coming over here there we are now i'm going to put that on a fairly low heat with its where's its lid there we are and we'll keep coming back to it just to give it a quick stir there we are now um for the i don't know if i've got any um boom 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 i was going to see give, give you some jerk um no i don't i've used it all some jerk sauce that you could marinate in instead but uh, i've used it all i like that seasoning i use the jerk seasoning a lot um i just put it in with soups and stews and with the vegetables it just adds a nice flavor to it i use a lot of seasonings like that so let's just turn this up again these are for the chinese noodles now in here i've got spaghetti already cooked we're going to put that keeping it warm put it on one side it has been drained and i just ran some sesame soil over it and stirred it around with the tongs so that it separates i rinsed it if you don't rinse at that stage all the starch sticks together and you can't separate it you've got to start all over again there you are that's got nice and warm i'm going to just take one of those out carrots I can't use big tongs. There we are. My little ones. I've got some carrots in there. And you see, they're sliced and cut on the cross. I'm just separating because some are, are together and I want them to be, look, they're clinging together. I want them separated so that they cook. We don't want them to be all soft and soggy. And look, can you see? Can you see that, Derek? Yeah. Now, that's a carrot, obviously, peeled. And the recipe says two carrots. Well, my carrots were about that long. So I only use one carrot. Peel the carrot and then cut it in half, long ways, and then just cut on the diagonal. And that w this way, we can cut the carrot nice and thinly but they still see they still keep nice and crisp so just let those cook for a few minutes oh oh dear now i they've just been cooking for a few minutes i've got some um that's some garlic so we can add the garlic to the carrots now mmm the flavour, the smell is lovely. And just give those a few minutes. Now, in here, I've got hosing sauce and soy sauce. The hosing sauce adds a sweetness to it. So I have to, with being diabetic, I have to be a little bit careful with hosing sauce. Mm. let's scrape it all out that, that, that carrot's got all stuck together again there we are and green onions which are just sliced use the top as well as the bottom and I'm going to put that down onto low turn it down on to low and I'm going to put the lid on and we'll come back and we'll we'll give it a stir from time to time because we want the vegetables still to be nice and crispy but not soggy there we are let's go back and have a look at the pork mm, you see I don't know if you can see 
Look, can you see the juices coming out of the pork? Can you see that, Derek? Turn it sideways. <laughs> sideways. That's it, that's sideways. <laughs> like that. No, 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 no. The lower end towards me. Turn it like this, Maggie. <laughs> Just turn it like that. That's it. Now, hold it there. Now, tilt it up. Can you yeah, see? Now we can see. Ah! <laughs> Science! You see the juices coming out of the pork. That's why it's cooked, Cindy. We want those juices to come out because it all adds. Just turn it down. A little bit so that it keeps cooking but we don't want it to boil dry if that's down that's cooking the smells are beautiful I've got to wash my hands again they're all sticky I've got kitchen uh, towels all over you notice that I don't use um, I don't use a a pan um, thick oven gloves. I, I I can't feel. I like to use the I like a towel so I can feel what I'm doing. Okay, so now we're going to make a mango salsa which goes with the pork. And for this, I've got frozen mango. I'm, I'm lazy. I don't like cutting up mangoes, I must confess. I like the frozen. I keep it in the freezer. Just take a little bit out when I need it. And I don't have any wastage. Red onion. I like red onion to go with this. Um, if you wanted to use a green onion or yellow onion, that's entirely up to you. Just a little brown sugar. And this is best if you make this up at least half an hour before you're going to eat. So all the flavours mingle together. Uh, fresh parsley or dried parsley. I couldn't get any fresh parsley this time of the year. So I use dried parsley instead. Normally, I've got it in the garden, so I just go and snip a little bit. Now, a good pinch of cayenne. And that is all there is to making the salsa. Just make sure that I've got everything. And, excuse me, my bin's fallen over. Now, as I say, I would normally make this the night before, leave it in the fridge and let all the flavours mingle, cover it over and let all the flavours mingle. And that is all there is to making the, uh, the mango salsa. I'm going to add, just over the top, I'm just going to add a, a little parsley. I wish I'd got some, some fresh parsley. A little cilantro in there would go quite nicely. There we are. I want to add a little bit of colour to it. I'd even used up all the cilantro, which is unusual. So that is the mango salsa. Now, the jerk seasoning. I'm just going to go back to the stove to give everything a quick stir. So come back with me. Oh, yes, beautiful. I think that could go up a little bit. Mm. That needs to go down. I'm going to have a taste of this because it might need it might need just a little bit of seasoning added to it at this stage and I want to see if it's cooked because it doesn't take long to cook 
find a piece that I can eat. Mm. That is so good. Mm. Doesn't need any seasoning. Now, let's t I've got it on the lowest I can get it, so just let it sit there and simmer. Now, we're using pork. You can use chicken or you could use shrimp. You know, the same idea. Uh, veal, if you've got veal. I used to um, I used to work with an emu farm, and I would do something like this with the with emu because it's very low in cholesterol, but it it's it's like tofu. It's a flavor. It's a carrier of flavors, and you could all you could if you wanted to go vegetarian with this, use a hard tofu, and cook it exactly the same way. Put it. Um, Put it with the marin uh, with the jerk seasoning over it, leave it overnight, and then just add a little oil and just fry it off gently, and then you've got a vegetarian meal. So it's very versatile. So, uh, so let's go back and make up the um, the seasoning. As you can see, it's got. I think I think I counted f fourteen different seasonings. Uh, I've got everything in there, yes. Um, let's start off, where, where are we? We've got, uh, there we are. We've got onion powder, onion powder, garlic powder, onion powder, garlic powder, cayenne, cayenne brown sugar, uh, cayenne, brown sugar, a little, uh, a little um, nutmeg, cinnamon, um, nutmeg, cinnamon, uh, chili peppers, pepper, salt. Um, so, onion powder, garlic powder, cayenne pepper, paprika. That's that one. Allspice ground. Now I don't have ground allspice, but I do have a little a little uh, coffee grinder and I keep a whole allspice all and just grind it as I need it because if you grind too much it loses its volatile oils and that's where all the flavour is, it's in the volatile oils. You, you seeds will keep a long time but once it's ground it has a limited shelf life. Salt, ground black pepper, pepper flakes, cumin, again I have cumin seeds, I grind them. Uh, cinnamon, I do buy ground cinnamon, I can't be bothered. Uh, brown sugar, dried thyme and dried parsley. And that makes a jerk seasoning. So let's put it all together. And I just put it in a, a screw top jar. Keep it on my shelf rack, but make sure that it's not in the direct light because you, you your see uh, your spices will fade so it really is the best idea to buy spices in small amount or grind the seeds down when you need them or grind just a little seed down to keep them on the shelf so we just mix all this together Now I make, as I say, I, I got all these spices, the, the fairly common spices. Um, so you can use, you can make up as much as you like. And what I like about, um, in the middle. Yeah, yeah, it's telling me off again. Mm. God, you know, these directors, producers, directors, call them what they like. They get ever so bossy, you know. Do this. Ha <laughs> ha. Ha ha. Uh, news for you, mate. <laughs> there we are. So, the, what I like about mixing your own is you know it's fresh. You don't know how long it's been on the shop shelves. Apart from that, you don't know how long it's been in the warehouse. Apart from that, you don't know how long it's been in the spice warehouse. Uh, can't you tell? I used to make. Uh, I used to sell herbs and spices. I used to sell all my own rubs and everything. And um, 
if you don't like something, you can alter it. Now, somebody might like more cayenne pepper in that. Somebody might say, oh, I don't like cayenne pepper. So, you know, you can alter it to your own taste. That's what I like about making my own. So let's go back and see how things are going. This looks as though it's doing quite nicely. Mmm, it smells absolutely delightful. I'm going to add the spaghetti to that. Now, I, on the recipe, uh, the recipe says six cups, 16 ounces of spaghetti. I cut down the amount of spaghetti. There's only Derek and I, and I'm not over keen on spaghetti. So I, I did about 12 ounces of spaghetti, which to me is quite a lot. Whoa, we lost some luck. Now what we've got to do is stir all this around so that the spaghetti the noodles are coated with the sauce now i'm using as i say i'm using spaghetti but i i like this cooked with urdon noodles especially if i'm doing a, a jerk pork uh, the, the thicker noodles that you can buy uh, so you could use urdon noodles or um if you uh, or the uh, vermicelli noodles so it's adaptable again and just make sure that if you've got somebody coming for a meal that they're not uh, gluten uh, gluten intolerant if they are use some gluten free noodles but buy the soy sauce without gluten in it. Um, because it really can have a dire effect on people. Because these days, uh, there's so many allergies, it's always advisable to ask if anybody's got any intolerance, food intolerance, and then you can always work around it. Because you might think, oh yeah, that's okay. But if they're really, really gluten intolerant, it, it will make them very, very ill. I'm going to taste that. This might need a little seasoning. There we are. <sighs> this is going to be interesting, trying to pull a piece of spaghetti out. <laughs> I can't get it. <laughs> mm. It needs heating through a little bit more. And it needs a little seasoning. I don't want to turn the heat up too high because I'm going to scorch it. So just keep turning. You don't want to burn the spaghetti. And this takes a little bit of time. I know it looks a bit boring, but you really have to do this whilst it's heating through. Otherwise, you're going to, there's not much liquid in there and you're going to burn the spaghetti, which is a shame because it really is full of flavor. Um, there's one thing you can, can add to this, which I, I didn't do today, but I like. And that's a little chopped ginger in there. It always goes. And it's good for you. It's good for the digestion. So, as I say, use these, use these recipes not as a, a Bible, but as a guideline. And so if there's something that you don't like in there, as I say, leave it out. And if there's something that you really like, 
like some fresh fresh dropped ginger in there put it in put it in experiment my trouble is I never make the same recipe twice that's what I hated about production because I used to make recipes up uh, that's part of my training uh, for various firms I made the first it must have oh looking back on it it probably tastes atrocious I made the first dehydrated um, curry in England and I look back on it now and say oh my gosh I bet it was I, it was popular but ooh. and so when I was producing people bought the product and they wanted the same product every time and it was so boring as far as I was concerned I'm always altering recipes and uh, you can't do that and the same with the restaurant when I had the restaurant people used to come in and say I want I used to call it Maggie special sometimes when I didn't know um, sometimes I didn't know quite uh, I got a I didn't know what to call it. I'd made up a recipe. And Kate's dad, who hated serving, my late husband, hated serving in the restaurant. But it was very good. He did. And people would phone up and order, because I used to cook to order. And they'd say, we want a Maggie special. And he would say, what day was it and what colour was it? Because whatever went out was always a Maggie special. So uh, use this as a bed. Like that. Use it just as a bed. So let's get the pork. That is cooked. I know that is cooked. And you see, we still got a little, a little juice in there. So let's put the pork on top of this. Just pile the pork on top there. And all that pork juice is going to descend into the, into the noodles. That's just a little piece of kitchen paper to clean up. Round the edge. And some mango salsa just across the middle and you can serve mango salsa on the side with it and let people help themselves and whoa that nearly went off the edge I'm going to put just a little tomato on the side like that to add a little bit of colour and your boar's playing us out. Enjoy your jerk pork. Please go to Mrs Calabash Cooks on Facebook, like and please let me know what you like, what you don't like about the show, what you'd like me to make, if you've got a special recipe, or if you'd like me to um, do something special.